Ghana's government has taken a bold step to enhance the welfare of cocoa farmers and combat smuggling by announcing a 45% increase in the producer price of cocoa for the 2024-2025 crop season. This significant adjustment, effective immediately, raises the price for a 64-kilogram bag of cocoa beans from $132 to about $192, marking a 129% increase from the previous season's opening price. Agriculture Minister Brian Achipong emphasized that this unprecedented rise reflects the government's commitment to improving the cocoa sector and supporting the livelihoods of farmers. This morning, uh, we are joined by Isaac Aguirre, who is a business and financial analyst. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Aguirre, for joining us on the show. Great to be here. So um, how does the depreciation of the Ghanaian city, we're going to start from that, um, against the dollar, how does it impact the overall profitability of uh, cocoa farmers, despite the increased uh, producer price that we've seen so far? Well, definitely, uh, that is one of the reasons why farmers believe that the current uh, over 40% increment in the price of cocoa bag is not sufficient or is not adequate because you see inflation above 20%. And the depreciation of the local currency against major trading currencies like the dollar and the euro all above 20%. So essentially, whatever you give to farmers is being eroded by depreciation and then also uh, inflation. Uh, so then, what's with the Ghanaian CD? Seems like it's a currency that cannot be used within this um, sector in terms of business transactions. Yes, the CD is, is what we spend here in Ghana. We don't um, you know, print dollars. But in fact, whatever that happens to the dollar has a rippling effect on the uh, purchasing power of the, uh, on, on uh, how do you call it, farmers. And so essentially, if you raise the price of cocoa, but farmers are still struggling to buy, uh, you know, uh, food, they are still struggling to, 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 to get accommodation and all of that, that tells you that they will not be happy with the current 45% increment in cocoa price. They want a price that is higher than this. Uh, they want to make sure they bridge the gap, the gap between what inflation has actually caused to their disposable income. So essentially, it is one of the reasons why government must look at this 45%, although it is, it is higher. But if you're comparing this to last year, remember last year before we even began the season, government increased the price by more than 60%. And this time around, we're talking about 45%. So it is, uh, this is relatively lower if you compare it to what we saw at the beginning of last year. Of course, we know that during the course of the season, government went ahead to add additional, I think, 56% to the earlier 64% that it began the planting season with. But inflation and depreciation of the local currency is still continuing. If you look at the city versus the dollar, for instance, the city has lost more than 24% of its value against the dollar. And that means that disposable income of farmers has actually reduced. So, yeah. So another reason for the increase has to do with um, the story around um, smuggling of this uh, particular commodity. I'd like to get an idea of who the perpetrators are and how it is affecting um, the industry. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's important to state that no cocoa farmer in Ghana can single-handedly say that they are smuggling cocoa beans. It is actually a cartel who buy from farmers at a higher price because definitely farmers also want a higher price. That is the reason why we are smuggling at the moment. But it's not an, uh, something that is being done by individual farmers. It is a whole cartel against the cocoa uh, you know, industry here in Ghana, and they are exploiting the fact that there's a gap between the price being offered by the government and that being offered by the black market. This year, let me even start with the last two seasons. We had about 150,000, uh, you know, tons of cocoa smuggled out of the country. This, or the just ended season, it is estimated that about 200,000 tons of cocoa were smuggled out of Ghana in just the, 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 the last season. 200,000 versus the uh, close to 500,000 uh, tons that Ghana was able to pro produce in the just ended season, that tells you that a significant co component of the cocoa produced here in Ghana, more than 30% got smuggled out of the country. We are not even talking about illegal mining. We are not talking about the El Nino disease or the swollen shoot or what have you. Smuggling alone took away 30% of 
all that was produced here in the country in the just ended you know season that tells you that it's a big problem here and it's simply because the black market is exploiting the difference between the price being offered to the farmers by the government what is prevailing in that black market as well and farmers want a good deal so definitely uh, they are finding ways and means to sell to the black market which is illegal but when you create that form of uh, you know opportunity you find economic agents taking advantage of that okay so um the big issue here right now is um how will the government now fund the substantial increase um in the producer price that they've announced and what are the potential trade-offs um in terms of other public spending priorities the body responsible for cocoa purchases and all all of its governance is the cocoa board and at the moment we understand that cocoa board doesn't want to do the syndicated loan anymore it is not because Cocoa Board has so much money. That's why they don't want to do syndicated loan. This year, we understand they wanted $1.5 billion from the syndicated loan market. But because currently it is not credit worthy, remember that um, I think about two or three months ago, we analyzed here on Business Edge that um, Cocoa Trading Houses, just by trading with Ghana in the just end of season, said they lost about $1.4 billion only because Ghana could not uh, you know, produce or supply the cocoa that they assured them through the cocoa syndicated loan. So this time around, it was going. To, it was very clear that Cocoa Board was going to face complex, uh, um, you know, interest rates and regimes around the whole, whole cocoa syndicated loan. And they've looked at it and they've seen that it is not something that they can deal with. That is why Cocoa Board is opting for self-financing. It means that all the cocoa that will be bought here in the country will be financed by a Cocoa Board you know, directly. It will not be, there will not be a forward sale per what we are understanding. But the difficulty here is that usually Cocoa Board used to tap from two domestic markets, which is their treasury bills and also financing from the Bank of Ghana, which is a central bank. But because Ghana is currently under, under an IMF program, the central bank is precluded from giving Cocoa Board or any government entity any form of financial assistance. This is what the IMF calls the zero percent financing. If you come into the other side, which you were supposed to tap in, which is their treasury bill market, Cocoa Board just did a debt restructuring, and most of the investors who bought Cocoa Bills in the you know three, four, five years ago have lost their investment, and some of them have been forced to take haircuts, and okay. so that space is no more. So I kind of I cannot understand why Cocoa Board is opting for self financing, but I do not know where they are going to get that money to do the, the financing in the domestic space. Anyway. So, which would actually mean that, um, you, of course, um, the increase in the producer price would not be sustainable as we see it when you know, Ghanaians are thinking, why can't the government even go after the smugglers and nip them? Because they seem to be the reasons why there is a spike and there's a dis disorientation or disruption in the prices. But then, uh, Isaac, maybe we'll talk about this some other time. Um, Isaac Akie, uh, business and financial analyst, it was nice talking to you. Uh, thank you so much much. You're welcome.